H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Scripts. Okay. Basically, a uh, developer, uh, these, these different teams, I know they'll write their own logics. And they will also write their uh, unit testing scripts, integration scripts. Okay, integration testing. Integration testing scripts means for uh, no because say DB is uh, basically they are creating a script. Uh, uh, basically, they are uh, integrating to the uh, other artifacts over here, right? So patch developer, patch developer uh, writing their logics and they are integrating their logics to other uh, other programs indirectly. So we we probably might have integration uh, unit testing scripts, integration uh, scripts, integration testing scripts. These scripts have to be executed for each and every a new push. Okay, for each and every push. Okay, for each and every push. Here I said uh, push means basically technically we call it as a check-in. Okay, I mean we are basically saving our artifacts in the project repository. Okay, so for each and every push or each and every check-in, we have to make sure that we have to uh, we have to basically we have to execute unit testing. And integration testing scripts. Basically, it is something like say, for example, I uh, know uh, uh, what I can say here. Uh, say, for example, uh, you brought a, a memory card and you are inserting it into your phone. It's like you are coupling a memory card to your uh, phone. And after that, you will immediately check whether that is getting the memory uh, is getting reflected in your phone or not. You will immediately check it, right? That's a kind of testing. In a similar way, when we integrate different sets of artifacts, we will make sure that uh, the basic things. Here, when I say unit testing and integration testing means, don't uh, think very very high level. It's like a uh, basic things, the basic uh, you know sanity things, like whether it is properly coupled or not, whether properly the basic uh, syntaxes are uh, working fine or not. Okay, so there will be these set of scripts. So for each and every push, we will execute these scripts. We will make sure that everything is correct. Okay, if there is any wrong, we will try to uh, you know, uh, send an email, uh, we will send an uh, email automatically. Okay, so here, basically what I am trying to say here, you are continuously, this developer and this team and this team, this team is continuously pushing their logic to the project repository. For each and every push, I have I want to execute some set of scripts. I want to make sure that uh, the uh, all these artifacts has been coupled, has been integrated perfectly, and there is no uh, syntax errors. There is no other errors. I want to make sure for each and every push. Okay. So like here we are continuously integrating. We are continuously integrating different artifacts to the uh, existing artifacts, and for each integration, for each push. We want to uh, make sure the existing artifacts did not get disturbed. Okay, this process will be allowed in a tool called continuous integration process tool. Okay, say for example, uh, and uh, in in this continuous process integration also we can automate, like for each and every push, for each and every push we can automatically trigger the unit testing and uh, integration scripts. So automatically it is going to execute those scripts, and once it executes, it will send an email uh, to the stakeholders. Okay, so that can be do that can be performed in a tool called continuous process integration tools. Okay, continuous integration process tools. This can be uh, done in a, uh, uh, here again in as part of CIP. I mean continuous integration process. 
there are some set of tools available. Uh, we call like Jenkins is one of the tool and Hudson is one of the tool. Again, of course, Hudson is a part of Jenkins only. Okay, here in our class, we are going to understand Jenkins. I will uh, I will guide how to install Jenkins. Okay, how to uh, you know uh, will try to understand how uh, we can uh, you know how we can create some jobs in Jenkins. Okay, so basically here. Uh, here there should be here I'm saying for each and every push, for each and every push, there should be unit testing and integration scripts has to be executed. So this again this is a kind of automatic, right? When you do a push, automatically this integration and uh, 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 unit testing scripts has to be executed. Those uh, results has to has to share with the stakeholders. Again, this is a, like an automatic process, and this process is mainly when you integrate when you integrate the new things to the old things this process has to be triggered okay this can be enabled in a tool called continuous integration process tools yep any questions to this point yep uh, here when i say repositories means is as uh, an Uma was saying configuration management tools yes repositories are something like configuration management tools here uh, we have something called svn and we have github uh, apart from this, there are so many other tools. I think uh, even I'm not sure. There is something like Tortoise. There are some set of tools available uh, for uh, repositories. When I say repositories, means where our projects are going to be saved. Like here, I was saying it's a kind of a project repository, project database, right? So this project database basically uh, is nothing but these repositories. There is something called uh, uh, SVN, GitHub, Tortoise. Okay. These are the different repositories that we can use. Okay, it's a very simple concept, but uh, you know here again for this I need to have uh, I need to install them and I need to have kind of a server and all. So actually I'm not going to explain anything over here, but I'm just giving a theory kind of uh, information here. Repositories are nothing. It's very simple. Uh, here uh, we have SVN, we have GitHub, we have Tortoise. Basically, we are going to save our artifacts in these uh, uh, things. Basically here, I have created a project. Here I have created a project, and here I'm saving all the artifacts in in our project. And this basically these are the different projects. These are the projects which are saved on my local machine, right? Instead of uh, you know saving these uh, scripts, uh, what are the scripts that we are going to develop? In the instead of saving in the local repository, basically we can save them in the, into the repository into the uh, these repositories. It might be SVN, it might be GitHub, it might be Tortoise. Okay, we can save these uh, these scripts in a, a centralized lo uh, location. Of course, uh, if, when I say centralized location, we should have a server. In that server, we are going to create a SVN, and uh, that server location will be uh, will be given from uh, from here. Okay, so here basically we uh, even our Selenium scripts also might be saved in these locations. Okay, so. Uh, Shall we uh, shall we start with ant tool? Shall we go ahead with the ant tool? Yes. Yep. yep. We will start with the ant tool. Here are the some steps for installation the uh, for installing the uh, ant. Okay. Here everyone over here. Go to this particular website. Yep, let me share, uh, let me give this uh, website here in the chat box. Yep. Everyone, uh, you know, just copy that website. Open that website. Basically, from this website, we can download the ant tool. Okay. Come on, let, let it open.
Now, uh, everyone of you have, I know, go to this particular website and based on your operating system, okay, here, uh, based on the operating system, download the uh, files here. See here, uh, if it is a Windows operating system, you know, download this. I think this is for the uh, Mac, okay. So, based on your operating system, download this uh, uh, files, okay. Download this file and it is going to be a, a zip format. Okay, so it is a zip archive. So once you download it, unzip it. Okay, so here. Once you download, unzip the file and then update the environment variable. Here we have to create the, some environment variable. So how to create the environment variables means? You go to computer, right click on the computer over here, save properties. Okay. And here there is advanced system testing, uh, uh, system settings. And here, environment variables. Under advanced tab, we have environment variables. Everyone of the here, I go here, control uh, computer, I said properties. Once I click on properties, here I know I clicked on advanced system testing, uh, system settings and after that we got the system properties. Here in advanced tab, here uh, I clicked on environment variables and in this environment variables, here I have created two variables here. Okay, one is ant underscore home, okay, create a variable, uh, create an environment variable ant underscore home and here you have to give the location of the uh, and uh, and file where you have uh, extracted. I mean here we have downloaded, right? Here I have downloaded, and here I have uh, uh, unzipped the uh, downloaded file. Basically, you have, you have to give the location of the uh, unzipped file. Here in my case, see here it is in C uh, C drive. Here my uh, cousin's uh, name uh, here. Okay, see here. It is uh, and uh, this uh, this and uh, it seems in my machine it is having and 1.8.4. Okay, so this has been um, uh, extracted here in my uh, here over here. Okay, so uh, download it, unzip it. Once you unzip it, you know place that particular folder in your folder and uh, you know take the name of that particular folder here. Just copy this name, copy the folder path. Okay, copy it in this folder path. And create an environment variable saying ant underscore home give till this point. Then uh, you know in your path variable by de by default generally there will be a path variable here. Okay. Everyone observe here. By default there will be a path variable. You might have already some uh, some data here. Everyone observe here. In a path variable, if you already have a data, don't delete it. Don't delete it. Just say edit. Everyone try to understand here. In the path variable, if you already have a data, okay, click on edit, and here uh, just use uh, uh, semicolon here. Just use semicolon and uh, give the give the uh, you know location of this bin. When uh, you know you have to mention the same uh, Apache folder, and then you have to give the bin location. You have to give the this copy this path and mention as a path variable over here. Okay, if you already have a if you already have a, some data. Don't delete it. Just use semicolon and uh, paste the uh, this location Apache folder bin bin path. Okay, which is already configured in the machine, so I'm just ignoring them. Okay, once you configure, once you configure this environment variables, okay, open the command prompt. So here I'm opening the command prompt, and here uh, just type this ant hyphen version here. Okay, give me a minute. Just type and hyphen version. Now it is going to give the uh, a version of the ant. Okay, it has to give the version of the uh, ant. Here it is giving the Apache ant TM version 1.8.4 compiled on May 22, uh, 2012. Can you all agree this? It seems this is the uh, ant version which has been built on this uh, date. And this is the version which is installed in my machine. Okay. So 
it is going to give a mis this message app uh, apache anti and okay but if you don't get this question say once you open command prompt and once you do this say if you uh, for the first time probably you may get an error message okay you probably you might get an error message saying this error message unable to locate a tools dot job uh, expected to find it in this location it is going to give uh, expected to find it in this location okay you, you don't need to do you don't need to worry about this just you know go to this file go to this particular place okay I'm, i have given any information probably this might be different okay just make sure if you get this message just go to this particular location okay so you have go to this particular location there is something like tools tools jar jar file copy this jar file copy this jar file and paste under this particular folder okay go to this particular folder and let me manually open this see program file 36 Okay, then Java JDK, Java so JDK, and here under this lips, paste that particular file. Okay, basically you have copying, you know, from this location. Basically, what we are doing here, I think I have opened the same same things, right? Same folder, Java JDK. Okay, it seems I have copied all over version. Okay, simply here actually have you uh, know. Okay, if you observe here, I'm um, from the program files, from the program files, I have uh, from this lib, I have copied this tools dot jar file into the program files eighty six here. Okay, of course here uh, the error message itself it will say about this information, unable to lo locate uh, tools dot jar file, expected to find. Okay. Basically, it is expected to find in this 86 folder, but that jar file, that tool dot jar file was in this uh, in this program files instead of 86, it was there here. So I go to uh, I went to this particular location. I have copied from uh, from this location to this location. Simple. Okay. Then after that, again type and version. You should get a message like this. Okay. Of course, you uh, know I got this mess uh, this error message. I have fixed it. Okay. I got this error message. I have fixed it. So after fix it, uh, you know, we will not get this message. Okay, this is how we install the ant. Okay, and then here, if you remember, in ant, I said there is something like build build dot xml, and I said there is like some something called shell scripting. We use something like shell scripting in a xml file. So by using shell scripting, basically we will write the logic. Basically, we will write the logic. Like uh, here, uh, you know, for uh, configuring these jar files automatically, for creating, for deleting the old data, for uh, creating the new data, for compiling, executing. Okay, basically, all this data will be, uh, all this, uh, all this related logic will be written in a XML file called build dot XML, and this will be written using a uh, uh, shell scripting. Okay, now let me show this. Now see here, I already have build dot XML. Every now and then, okay. Here, which build dot XML is part of the old class. As of now, I'm just showing it how it looks like. Every now and then, let me minimize. Just try to understand in a very high level. Now, every now and then, here first of all, I'm configuring some set of things here. And as of now, here, uh, you know, uh, if you remember. Uh, Uh, we have configured the uh, jar file store project. Okay, even we don't need to configure every time. We can automatically configure the jar files to our project. Okay, in this case, actually, I did not write a logic uh, here in this in this build dot xml. We don't have a logic uh, to download from the website and uh, uh, configure over here. But here we have a logic uh, like automatically configure the jar files to our project. Okay, you don't need to manually. Uh, you know, uh, go to the properties of your pro project, and you don't need to manually configure it. This is going to be done automatically. Okay, 
so how it is going to be happen uh, it is been uh, you know configured in this in this way here something like path id test log class path here all this logic whatever you see here that is basically related to shell scripting and if you all up there there is a i have given one folder location here can you all up there c class stk infosys selenium all jars it means what are the jar files that are required for for our project i am going to keep in a folder here okay whenever this project whenever the this build is going to be executed all those jar files will be automatically configured to our uh, uh, our project okay you don't need to manually configure those jar files automatically configure to our project i will show okay and moreover if you all up there there is something called target here it is a terminology of um, again this uh, xml so there is something like clean clean means here i said here i was talking about um, deleting old data right here we have a logic to clean clean means it is going to clean the temporary files okay in it means if there is any files to be created or if any variables are way, if something need to be uh, you know uh, created as a prerequisite so here it is being mentioned as in it okay and then compile okay and if you observe your compile is depends on in it it means whenever you want to only compile it is going to uh, execute in it okay it means if if you want to execute compile first it will trigger in it once in it is done it is going to compile okay and here finally we have run every now there run we can also name it as execute say i can name it as execute i will let you know say if i want to use this execute it is going to depends on compile it means before I, uh, before it actually executes first it will execute the compile okay again compile is indirectly depends on this init can you all agree here so this is uh, how it is automatically going to perform so basically if you want to execute the scripts okay first it is it will it will go for compile again in the place of compile it depends on init so what will happen first init will be executed init means it is going to basically uh, uh, you know create of uh, the any files need to be created as a prerequisite and then it will compile and then will execute okay now everyone observe this is a build uh, build file okay why it is showing this error yep, okay there actually if you all observe here there is something like default here can you all observe here the default run it means earlier if you remember here we had run it means whenever you try to execute this build build file build.xml by default uh, it is going to execute this particular method i mean this particular target we had run right and here you have default run it means it means whenever you execute this build build file uh, without mentioning anything okay uh, it it is going to directly execute this particular method by default okay so it means say if you mention execute here Here I'm mentioning the target name as execute here. Okay, so if you observe here, here the name of the uh, this particular uh, step name is execute. So by default it is execute. Probably now let me create one project here. Now everyone observe here. It's a kind of again a revision. How can I create a new project over here? How can I create a new project? File, new. Here, if you remember, I said click on others, and here, if you remember, I said I asked you to type Java, so you'll get Java project. Okay, say next, and here I'm giving uh, name of the project name as B I Selenium Ant. Okay, I'm giving the name as B I Selenium Ant. Finish. now in general uh, what we are going to do say if i want to uh, you know say this is a selenium project i want to create a selenium program here what i have to do i have to configure the selenium web driver files right however now we'll go with uh, now let let me copy one of the uh, java program okay let me create one uh, package here I have created a project. I have created a package. 
now uh, let us go to the our uh, one of the uh, uh, this file class is up let's put in this is mean selenny yep i'm just i uh, know copying uh, one of the file here uh Here I'm just let me take this uh, this uh, file here. Okay, basically uh, in Selenium IDE we have recorded a script and we have exported it, right? So I'm trying to make use of that uh, particular file over here. Yep. Yep. I'm trying to make use of that particular file. I'm copying this file. Let me paste over here. we have to remove the first line and here i have to say uh, this ant demo it means basically apart from the default package we have to give the name of the package in in our script so here the package name is ant demo so here i'm mentioning package ant demo over here now everyone agree here now everyone agree here this we know this is a, a program that we have exported from selenium ide okay now see here it is showing all these errors why all this why uh, it is showing all these errors why it is showing errors why it is showing errors why this program is showing errors that's correct ma what about this yes here we did not configure the jar files okay we did not configure the jar files that's the reason uh, it's, uh, it's it is throwing the errors now everyone of the here i'm not going to configure the jar files here okay i'm going to use a, a, a no i'm going to use a, i'm going to use a, this build.xml that build.xml will automatically configure the jar files to our project while executing the script so here i'm not going to um, configure the jar files over here okay and see here let me copy the build.xml from the uh, from the uh, world script so here i'm copying this build.xml so here i'm copying this file okay i'm um, let me paste over here i'm pasting at the project level everyone up there here i'm not i'm pay, i'm not pasting this build.xml in the uh, packages are not in not in source okay copy and paste this build.xml in the uh, project level okay now see here let me open this build.xml here let me close the other files Now everyone up there, this is the program that we have used in this uh, BH Selenium Ant, and this is a build.xml. And here I already said, here this is the folder where I have kept all the jar files which are re required for our Selenium project. Here, it's looking for the Selenium all jars. So in this folder uh, we have uh, we have all the jar files which are required for uh, Selenium project. Okay, so I have given the location of the jar files here. Okay. So here we did not configure the jar files. So these jar files, these jar files will automatically configure to our project from our build tool okay, during the execution. Okay, and here uh, we understand. Uh, see here we understand this clean. Clean means uh, if you observe here, this is the related logic. This is the related logic uh, for the clean. Here, here we have something like delete dir, basically which has which are like some command prompt uh, commands. Okay. So let me say, let me. I'm just removing these things. Init, init means uh, again as part of init, it is doing, it is deleting and it is creating some directories. Yeah, delete, make directory. Mkdir means it is going to create a directory. Okay, and compile. Here, uh, uh, basically, comp 
compile is uh, if you observe here, uh, you know, it is go it is going to compile all the uh, files here. Okay, so before that, it is making sure all the jar fi jar files are going to be used over here. If you observe here, file set directory lib here lib is nothing but this one library. Okay, so it is basically it is going to use this set of uh, values while compiling. Okay, while compiling the Java programs, it is making use of this uh, lib uh, lib over here. Okay. And here uh, executing. So basically, just we have to do here. We have to change this name. We have to give the package name and the script name here. So package name is here and demo, and the script name is this. So just get the script name. And only thing that we have to take care about is this. Okay. I'm changing. I'm giving the script name over here. Okay. I'm giving the script name. Now we are done with the build dot XML over here. Now I want to execute this build dot XML here. Okay. Now I want to execute this project. Now everyone up here, just go to the physical location of this project. How to go to the how how can I find the physical location of this project? How can I find the physical location of this project? If you want to find the physical location of this project, right click, save properties. Here you can find the physical location of your uh, your uh, project. Okay, now see here in your command prompt, why why I'm asking you to uh, why I'm asking uh, uh, you know for the physical location here because see here let me go to this physical location. Everyone up there, this is the physical location here. Okay, BH Selenium and this is the physical location. So let me open this physical location. And here if you observe there is build dot XML. See here XML document here. Can you all observe this? So if I want to execute this build.xml, first I have to navigate to this physical location here in the command prompt. If I want to execute this build.xml, okay, using add tool, first I have to navigate to this particular folder. I mean, we have to navigate to this particular location here. Okay. Now everyone up here, in the command prompt, I'm going, I'm navigating to this particular location here. How can I navigate? I hope everyone know, knows the basic commands here in the command prompt. How can I navigate? Yes, by just mention cd, give the path. Okay, just mention the cd space path. So it is navigate. It will navigate to this particular folder location. Now everyone observe here. If I simply say and, everyone close the observe here. If I say simply and, okay. If I say simply and. By default, it is going to execute this method. Okay, if uh, you know, say if I simply say and, as I said, default method has execute. It is going to execute. Uh, it is it will directly comes to over here, and it will execute. It will basically in this execute uh, class we have mentioned a Java class. So uh, automatically, it is going to uh, build. Automatically, it is going to execute the script from the command prompt. Okay, so for example, everyone observe here. I am saying and space clean here. Everyone observe here and space clean means. So I'm uh, uh, mentioning, I'm explicitly mentioning this command. So I want to execute clean command. So if I say enter, here it is executing, it is doing something here and here it is clean and it is saying build successful. Basically whenever uh, uh, this and commands are, uh, I mean whenever we use and commands, if it is successfully executes, it will say build successful. Okay. Now see here, I'm, uh, now I'm saying ant init, okay, ant space init, so it is going to execute the init commands. Now I'm saying see here ant, I can mention exclusively like the, uh, like ant execute, I can mention like this, or I can simply mention ant, because here the default thing is execute. So even if you mention ant, everyone other here I'm mentioning ant here, now see here. It is going to, uh, as I said here, here, and uh, here uh, when I say and, default method is execute. So it will come to execute, and execute depends on compile. Compile is depends on init. So if you observe here the uh, this here, say first it has executed init. See here I, in this location I have used and, okay. So first it is executed com uh, init command commands, and then it is uh, executes com uh, compile commands. And then it started with execute commands, 
now after execute commands if you all observe here it is opening the selenium web, uh, this um, firefox automatically and it is executing the script now see here actually we did not configure the selenium web driver files to our project right but still it is executing over here because during the compile those files are were automatically configured now see here it is saying build successful and total time is 53 seconds okay i hope everyone uh, are able to follow over here okay so here automatically uh, uh, the selenium web driver uh, web driver files has been configured to this project and it has been executed and it has been showing here okay now everyone of the here now if you are if you are able to see here in this project uh, this the selenium ant and you can see only this thing right right click over here and say here uh, refresh everyone of the here refresh okay once you say refresh basically it is creating a folder called report everyone of the here it is creating a folder called report and if you expand this report here basically you, you can find html results here okay here there is a index.html okay when you execute your scripts from the ant tool it is going to generate a uh, automatically uh, uh, this one html results over here okay so here see here index.html and right click over here and say uh, open with browser i'm saying i'm saying open with web browser see here it has executed a package called and demo and in this and demo it has executed something called ebay search okay so it, it is saying uh, how much time it has taken okay so it is giving uh, some kind of you uh, know whether it is uh, successful or not basically these are very much helpful for the uh, developers in doing their unit testing because as i said earlier in the previous session basically it is not where developers don't really need any messages okay however See here, it has been as part of once you execute your scripts, it has created a folder called report. Now everyone up there, now let me go here. Now let me everyone up there, let me close this file here. Now everyone up there, let me say CLS. Now see here, I'm saying and space clean. Everyone up there, I'm saying and space clean. It means as part of execution, it has generated this report fol folder, right? Now, if I say and and space clean, it is going to delete this uh, report folder. Now, go to project, right click on the project, just say refresh here. See here, that report folder has been uh, vanished now. It means, you know, as I have used and space clean, that uh, report, whatever the reports that it has been created, those reports were uh, cleaned. Okay, so that is where I said, you know. Uh, before execution, say I want to delete the older files. Yes, you can simply use uh, this and space clean. I mean, all those things automatically executed over here. Okay. See here in this case of init, probably I can say depends clean. So indirectly, indirectly when we uh, execute uh, this one. Execute, execute depends on compile, compile depends on init, init depends on clean. So it will start with clean, then it will start with init, then it will start with compile, after that execute. Okay. So here if you here itself if you observe, after execution we had a, um, a reports and uh, I can delete that reports over here by using this command. Okay. So this is all about ant tool. Here uh, However, don't stick to the AND tool. As I said earlier, you know, here try to understand the concept. Okay, here everything uh, here, uh, you know, this jar files automatically configured to the project, and it is automatically uh, generating, uh, executing the scripts. It is generating some set of results, and here uh, actually we don't have the logic to, uh, you know, send the emails to the. Uh, we can also send the emails to uh, uh, some uh, stakeholders of the project. Okay, once the execution is done, we can write a logic. That logic will automatically send the emails to the um, uh, stakeholders of the project. Okay, but uh, these are all the things. Uh, whatever the AND tool, whatever today's session is basically more of uh, developers tools. Basically, all these tools generally developers uses. So there might be some situation wherein which a Selenium automation team might also use this. 
again you know i cannot commit that you know say if you are going to join in a company i cannot give a guarantee that they are going to use ant they may use maven okay they i am not give, give a guarantee that they are going to use uh, hudson they might use jenkins so that's the reason here first of all uh, try to understand the concept okay almost everything will be same but instead of suddenly listen to that word suddenly come across that words uh, you know instead of getting scared we are just trying to give a overall idea what are uh, what are all these tools <laughs>